Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So during quarantine, I decided to pick up a few new languages to learn because I wanted to kill some time and still be productive. And since language learning is a really big hobby for me, um, I decided to like look into some new languages I might want to learn. And um, by researching different types of languages, I found this really cool chart ranking system of how long it should take you to learn each language by the Foreign Service Institute and this is for native English speakers or people with a high level of English and it's ranked off of how similar or different the languages are based around English. I wanted to make this little video talking about some of the easiest languages for native English speakers to learn in case you also wanted to study a new language but you were not sure which language you would be best at. However, this does not mean that like by having a language that's easier to English, you won't have to put in as much work. It just means that you'll probably reach a higher level of proficiency faster than someone learning Mandarin Chinese or Russian. But it still will be a challenge either way because you have to put effort and work into studying a new language no matter how challenging or easy the language seems to be. So with that being said, I compiled a list of languages that are considered easier for native English speakers to learn. This list is in no way ranked or anything, I'm just going through alphabetical order by the languages that I found and I'll also link my resources in the description box of where I got my information since I am not a linguist major or have any sort of like certificates or extra education surrounding languages. I just do this as a hobby and a passion of mine. So please take my information with a grain of salt and do more research for yourself if you are interested in learning any of these languages. Also, I'll be looking down at my computer because I have um, some notes typed up about specific facts and information surrounding these languages that I wasn't able to memorize. So the first language is Afrikaans. So this is the official language of South Africa and it's also a recognized minority language in um, Nab Nambia? 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 I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing some countries' names. Um, that's the problem with being dyslexic is reading's not the easiest for me. I'll also just over here or somewhere on the screen, I'll put the names of uh, the countries and stats and stuff so that if I mispronounce something, you can search it for yourself because I'm not good at reading. It is also spoken in small populations in Botswana, Zimbabwe. It is sometimes called Cape Dutch Afrikaans. It is a part of the West Germanic language group and it's derived from 17th century Dutch. When the Dutch colonized Africa, they obviously brought over the language and then from that it evolved into Afrikaans. There are roughly 7 million native speakers in South Africa and there are a total of roughly 15 to 20 3 million um, speakers of this language throughout Africa and the rest of the world. So Afrikaans is considered to be an easier language for native English speakers to learn because the grammar is very similar to English so there's not a lot of differentiation between the grammar patterns and the sentence structure. There are no gender, like noun genders such as like the Romance languages where you would have like feminine masculine. There is none of that in Afrikaans such as English and verb conjugations are very simple. There are only three tenses, past, present, and future, but there are like like time words that indicate the sense of time, but you don't have to worry about like the whole different conjugations and stuff that you would find in Romance languages. And the pronunciation of Afrikaans is very similar to English, so it's not that different to learn the speech patterns and the letter sounds because it is a West Germanic language very similar to English. That is another thing is most of these languages are either Romance or Germanic languages because those are the ones that are most similar to English. So Afrikaans is a Germanic language very similar to English. So the next language is Dutch. Dutch is one of the official languages in the Netherlands and Suriname? 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 I'm so sorry, I cannot read that word. It is related to Flemish, which is the official language of Belgium. There are many different standards and dialects of Dutch and Flemish, but they all generally are derived from the same general language. 
It is a West Germanic language. Dutch is spoken by roughly 24 million people as their first language and 5 million as their second language. So it's a generally well-rounded language with many language speakers. So the reason Dutch is pretty easy for a native English speaker to learn is that Dutch borrows many words from English language and this makes it very easy for people of native English speaking to learn Dutch. However, compared to Afrikaans, Dutch does use gender nouns like many other of the European languages. However, if you have studied French or Spanish or Romance language, you'll be very familiar with this. It's very similar to many other languages and it's not that hard to learn, so it's not that big of a difficult hurdle to overcome. There are many complex vowel sounds and just like anything with practice, that's easy to overcome. English also has very complex vowel structures and likes to combine vowels a lot, so it's not that different from English. And the pronunciation is generally pretty standard with English. There are some variations and differentiations of different letters. And there are a few sounds that are not found in the English language. However, for the most part, Dutch is very similar to English and it's not too challenging to learn. And currently right now I am studying Dutch. Um, I've only been studying it for like a month or so, so I'm not that good, but it's not that challenging to learn. Or at least so far the basics aren't. There are many words that are similar to the English language, so it's very easy to understand. So that's why Dutch is not that difficult for a native English speaker to learn. The next language is German. German is a West Germanic language. It is the official language of Austria, Belgium, Germany, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, and Sweden. It is also a recognized minority language of the Czech Republic, Denmark, Hungary, Italy, uh, Kazakhstan, Nimbia, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. There are roughly 90 to 95 million native speakers. There are 10 to 15 million secondary speakers as well. So it is a bigger language than Afrikaans or Dutch. And so the reason German is considered easier for a native English speaker to learn, it's definitely not the easiest language on this list because there are many difficult grammar structures and stuff. However, because it is another West Germanic language closely related to English, there are many similar sounds and overall words that are shared amongst the two. However, German grammar is very tough and notorious for being a very challenging aspect of the language to learn. There are also three genders, four cases, and some odd syntax that you have to kind of overcome when you're learning the language. However, German and English share many similar cognates, so it's very easy to recognize words based on sound and overall um, similarities. And the verb conjugations are not that challenging. In addition, West Germanic languages share your many similar pronunciations of letters and words, so there are some differences, but overall, like Dutch and Afrikaans, the overall pronunciation is very similar and you won't come into contact with too many strange sounds that aren't found in English. So where was I? Um, French is the official language in Belgium, Benin, Burk Burkina, Burkina, Faso, Burundi, Cameroon, Canada, Central Africa, Re African Republic, uh, Chad, Comoros, Cote the uh, fun? I don't know, I can't speak French. Um, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Djibouti, Equatorial Guinea, France, uh, Gabon, Guinea, Haiti, Luxembourg, Madagascar, Mali, Mali, Monaco, Monaco, Niger. Uh, Republic of the Congo, Ru Rwanda, Senegal, Seychelles, Switzerland, Togo, and Vanuatu. Vanuatu. It is also used in many international organizations such as NATO, the UN, and EU, um, and other institutes such as the World Trade Organization. Um, so it's a very broadly spoken language through many um, continents and countries. It is also a international language due to the colonization the French people did. Um, so they colonized a bunch of countries and brought their language, 
which is why it's so widely spoken, especially in Africa, um, where many countries were colonized by France. So if you're interested in uh, Africa or just want to speak a language that many, many countries speak that you can go and visit these countries and be able to communicate with the native people, I suggest French as one, um, especially if you're unsure about learning specific um, smaller languages within Africa because there are obviously millions of languages within Africa. Um, this seems to be a very broadly spoken one that you'll be able to use in many countries. So the reason French is fairly easy for English speakers to learn is because French has a very heavy influence within the English language. There are many words that are similar and shared between the two languages, such as I believe like déjà vu, and you obviously hear like people say like merci, bonjour, and again there are many words um, similarly shared between the two, and if you've already studied a romance language, the, lang uh, the gender nouns won't be that challenging, and even then gender nouns aren't that hard to overcome, and the grammar is about as difficult as most languages grammar is. For me personally, it was the spelling that got me, um, and there are some uh, sounds, such as like the guttural R that's not found in English, but Again, these are pretty easy to learn. So the next language is actually quite a small language and I couldn't find a whole lot of information or resources around it. If I'm able to find more, I'll have them linked down below. But the next language is Frisian. So Frisian is in the group of West Germanic languages and is spoken primarily in small communities within Germany and the Netherlands. There are three main types of Frisian. There's West Frisian, North Frisian, and Salter Frisian. Salter Frisian. And it's a smaller language with around 500,000 people speaking it. However, I do believe there are initiatives in Germany and maybe the Netherlands to try to have Frisian spoken in schools within like the Frisian communities of those countries. And apparently what I've heard, Frisian is very similar to English. And it's considered like English is like cousin language. I'm not 100% sure why that is, but I have heard it's very similar. And the one stat that I was able to find on the internet is that they share up to 8% of lexical similarities. I don't know 100% what that means, but I've just seen many, many videos of people comparing the two languages and how similar they are, especially if you're interested in that part of the region or that history. Um, Frisian seems like to be a pretty decent language for a native English speaker to learn. The next language after Frisian, going in alphabetical order, is Indonesian. So it is a Austronesian language. Um, it is a standard form of Malay and is spoken through Indonesia. Um, it's the official language of Indonesia and the ASEAN. It is an official minority language of East Timor and the United Nations, I believe. Around 30 million people speak Indonesian as their first language and a further 140 million speak it as a second or third language. During the time Indonesia was a Dutch colony, it was heavily influenced by Dutch and that's when they brought in the Latin um, alphabet, I believe. So Indonesian is one of the only Asian languages that uses the Latin alphabet and is heavily influenced by European uh, language and culture because of the Dutch colonization of Indonesia. If you're looking to learn an Asian language but you're not quite ready to tackle like Chinese characters or a foreign script such as Thai, um, Hangul, or Hiragana or Katakana, um, this might be the language for you because it is very similar to English and has many similarities because it is so heavily influenced by Dutch so then since Dutch is so similar to English, Indonesian is so similar to English because of the Dutch influences within it. Additionally, the grammar is fairly simple and easy to learn. There are no tenses and time is expressed with um, time particles or like specific time words. So the main difficulty in Indonesian is the affixes. affixes? Since that's like the main uh, difficulty, there is also many um, more similarities than seems to be difficulties within this language. Obviously, it is another language so you're going to have to learn new words and learn new grammar and ha put some effort into it but there are many loan words from English and Dutch so if you speak English or Dutch this seems to be a fairly 
a strong contender for an easier language to learn, especially if you want to learn an Asian language, but once again, don't want to tackle the level three or four languages that are generally where um, most Asian languages fall under. So after Indonesian, we have Italian. So Italian language stems directly from Latin, just like many of the other Romance languages. Many different parts of Italy have dialects that are used in informal communication. However, there is still a standardized version of it, Italian that you can learn. But then if you want to get more in depth and go into more like specific regions and dialects, you can learn more of their accents and dialects if you want. So there are 67 million native speakers um, and is spoken by 13.4 million people within the EU as a secondary language. Um, it's the official language of San Marino, Switzerland, Vatican City, Slovenian, Istria? I think Istria. Istria count, County? It is also recognized minority language of Slovenia and Croatia. So again, it is a widely spoken language, obviously spoken in Italy, such as Italian, but it's also in other countries as well in the surrounding areas. So if you're interested in that history or that general geographic area, Italian might be a good um, option for you. So if you're looking to study a romance language but you're not a big grammar nerd or don't want to tackle with more challenging grammar and grammatical tenses, um, Italian might be the language for you. Then we're going on to Portuguese. So Portuguese is the official language of Portugal, Brazil, Angola, Angola, Cape Verde, East Timor, Equatorial Guinea, Guinea, Bissau, Bissau, Mozambique, Sao Tome, and Principe, and Macau. Um, it is also recognized minority language of Uruguay. There are 22.3 million native speakers and also 20 million secondary speakers. Portuguese is also a Romance language, such as Italian, French, Spanish. So once again, they share many Latin-based words that are also found in English. Again, they also have many English words they've brought in as loan words within their language. Also, since many people in the United States study Spanish as a second language in high school, Portuguese and Spanish are very, very similar. So if you already have a decent understanding or grasp of Spanish, Portuguese might be the second, like, third language, I guess, for you, because there are so many similarities. Portuguese is more of a nasally sounding um, language, and the pronunciation can be difficult for English speakers to learn. However, the rhythm of the language is fairly easy to follow, so once you kind of have a general gist of the language, it's not that hard to pronounce, especially if you're already familiar with, like, Spanish or another language. It's a lot easier, um, it's a lot easier to mimic the sounds. So that seems to be like the main issue with Portuguese, it's like just being able to pronounce and follow the rhythm and flow of the language. But again, if you already know Spanish like at a basic-ish level or have a general understanding of it, like many people um, who have gone to school in the US, that is if you actually paid attention in Spanish class, um, you will be able to have a good grasp of Portuguese. The next language is Romanian. So Romanian is a member of the Balkan Romance or Eastern Romance branch of the Romance languages. So it is technically considered a Romance language, which I feel like not everyone knows about. So it's the official language of Romanian, um, Moldova, and Vo Vodina. Vodina? It is a recognized minority language in Hungary and Ukraine. There are 24 to 26 million native speakers and an estimated 4 million secondary speakers. If you're interested in that area of Europe, again, I suggest learning Romanian because it is much easier than many of the surrounding countries' languages. However, if you are more interested in a challenge, then I highly suggest learning Russian or Ukraine or other Baltic languages such as like Lithuanian, Latvian, but again, their language is much more closely related to English and other Romance languages, so it would be a good language to learn if you are interested in that area, but don't want the huge burden of learning a lot of complex grammar and sounds and another alphabet. The next language is Spanish. Obviously, it's an incredibly popular language. It's one of the most spoken languages in the world. There are 483 million native speakers and 75 million um, secondary speakers. 
So Spanish is under the Romance language family. So Spanish is the official language of Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, um, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Equatorial Guinea, Guatemala, Honduras, um, Mexico, Mexico, um, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, um, Puerto Rico, Spain, Uruguay, and Venezuela. So obviously it's spoken by many, many countries. And it's also a significant minority language in Andorra, Belize, and the United States. If you're looking for a language that is spoken by dozens of countries, especially in South America, Latin America, and um, Spain regions, you your best bet is Spanish because with Spanish you'll be able to get more into the culture and history of these areas. So if they specifically interest you, I recommend Spanish. Um, also, if you live in the United States, Spanish is the second most spoken language within the United States. Um, dozens of people speak it, so if you want to better understand your neighbors or um, someone you know who speaks Spanish, it's not that challenging to learn as an English speaker. Obviously, it is another language, so you're going to have to put effort and hard work into learning it, but considering other aspects of it, it's not that hard. And the pronunciation is fairly simple, however, there are some different sounds, such as like the rolling of the R, which I personally cannot do, and it annoys my Spanish users so much that I cannot roll my R, and I've tried for years to figure out how to roll my R, and I just can't. I don't know why. So, yeah, and even if you can't roll your R, or you have some other weird thing you can't pronounce, it's not that big of a deal, you'll just sound very much as a foreigner, which obviously you are, it's not your native language, and having an accent, at least in my opinion, is not that big of a deal, as long as you're understood. And so, to be able to be understood in Spanish, it's not that challenging if you can't pronounce a few sounds. Obviously, if you speak with a very, very, very strong accent, it might be hard for people to understand you, but for the most part, if you put an effort in, it's not that hard to be understood in Spanish. Additionally, Spanish is phonetically spelled out, which is not the case in English, and I believe French and a couple other languages. So if you hear it, it'll be spelled the way you hear it. Um, if you read it, it'll be uh, pronounced pretty much exactly the way you see it on the paper. So there's not any like tricky, like weird rules or like particular pronunciations you have to memorize, as long as you have a general understanding of like the sounds of Spanish and like how each letter in the alphabet sounds, because obviously even though all these languages or most of them use the Latin alphabet, each letter is pronounced slightly different than English and that's just kind of something you have to get used to. But once you understand it, it's usually pretty easy to read and write in Spanish. Okay, so the last language on our little list of um, easiest languages for English speakers to learn is Swedish. So Swedish is a North Germanic language. Um, it is spoken by 10 million people as a native language and 3.2 million people as a secondary language. Swedish is the official language of Sweden, Finland, Island Islands, the European Union, and the Nordic Council. Also within like the Scandinavian area and Northern um, Europe, many people, you'll find people who speak Swedish because um, that area there tends to be a lot of like migrating, I guess, and like people travel within those areas since they're so close together. And also in general, the Nordic languages are very similar in the way they're spoken and written and pronounced. So generally, if you understand one, you'll be able to easily um, learn the others. Obviously, they're not the same languages because they're different languages, but they have very they have a lot of other similarities, which is why um, people in Scandinavia are able to speak English so well. It's because it's similar to English. So thus, as an English speaker, you'll be able to learn their languages because they're similar and then within that if you learn one of the Scandinavian languages it's generally easy to learn the rest of them. So since um, Swedish is a Germanic language it has many similarities to English as we discussed with like the West Germanic languages such as like Dutch um, and German and those languages. The Swedish alphabet has a few extra letters that are not found in um, the English alphabet however it's not that big of a deal like they're not like these drastically different letters once you have them generally memorized and there's like only like three or four extra letters that are not found in the English alphabet so it's not that big of a deal it's not like you have to learn a whole new alphabet or a whole new writing system so both languages follow the same subject verb object word order um which is a big help to English speakers because there are many languages that don't follow that especially the Asian languages so since it does follow the same um general grammatic word order as English it doesn't make it that challenging However, there are obviously some grammar differences, but for the most part, the grammar is somewhat similar. And 
uh, verb forms are normally pretty consistent. Um, they don't change a lot like English does. So all these uh, additional aspects as well as um, English and Swedish sharing many similar words. Again, many languages have adopted English words into their language, so it makes it a little bit easier for English speakers to learn. But overall, that's um, partially what makes uh, Swedish an easier language for English speakers to learn. So that's it for this little list that I um, created on easy languages for native um, English speakers to learn. I'll have all my resources linked down below. Again, disclaimer, I'm not saying that like any of these languages will be like super easy for you to learn. There's obviously going to be many differences to English. It just seems to be that these have the most similarities in comparison to other languages within the world. Again, there's many people of these languages that speak English, so it's not that hard to find a tutor or a study um, partner to help you learn their language. Additionally, if you have like a passion of their like, culture or history, that also helps to learn another language if you have a reason why you want to learn it. Yeah, that's generally a list of easier languages for um, English speakers to learn. So, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!